Welcome, bienvenidos to Elecciones 2018. I'm Elizabeth Ortega Lomayer, your host and producer. Tonight we will have a chance to speak to Lily Chi. She's candidate for state delegate in District 15. She actually works for the Office of the County Executive. And with us will be um, Santiago David Aura, his writer, editor, reporter, and um, he's with us in elections, Elecciones 2018. Lily, why Latinos should vote for you? Wow. We start right off the bat. Let me uh, first start by thanking you for giving me the opportunity to introduce myself. So thank you, Elizabeth. It was great experience working with you as a colleague. We both have many years of public service at local government level. Uh, I'm excited to be here. Thank you for the opportunity and nice meeting you, Santiago. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, why should Latinos vote for me? Um, yes. I have several very good reasons. First of all, uh, like many Latinos in Montgomery County, I am an immigrant. I came here as an adult, young adult, by myself. Um, I left China because it was during a very difficult time. When China first, I grew up during a very difficult time, and when China first did, finally decided to open its doors, uh, I took the opportunity to study abroad and came to this country by myself to build a better life and explore opportunities. The first 10 years was extremely difficult. I had to learn English the hard way. I had to use a Walkman to record lectures and go back to my room and cry and listen in order to keep up. I worked many multiple minimum wage jobs. Um, my husband and I both struggled a lot. Um, I had to use Planned Parenthood for prenatal care. I know what struggle means, and I can relate to a lot of immigrant experiences. And as a policymaker, I would make sure that the immigrant experience is reflected in everything we do. Um, and my public service, decade of public service in Montgomery County, from community building to as, you know, as a language access coordinator and the community liaison, and now as a CAO for economic development and workforce development, um, all of that comprehensive uh, co uh, collection of experiences would make me a, a great policy advocate and a legislator to speak for our community's needs. This is the first time you're running. Why do you say to go into politics? It is very, uh, very dangerous path for some people. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, it is my first time running, but I am somewhat already in the orbit of the political life, even though it was not a chosen path. You know, as an immigrant, you didn't know what to do with your own life. But over time, I fell in love with the public policy, with public service, and with the community service. To me, they are one and the same. My community life is often time related to my public service. And I helped many other elected officials, uh, whether they are first timers or incumbents, uh, uh, run for offices. So I have had some experience. And over the years, I have made a point of uh, bringing a lot of uh, new people into the political process by encouraging giving local, serving local, and voting local. So I need to set an example. Um, since I announced my campaign, a lot of people were excited. I think the best part of my campaign is I have been drawing out a lot of new voters and the new donors who have never before been involved in any political process and now they're going to vote as primary voters and that is very important for immigrant communities whether you're Latinos or Asians or African immigrants. Olga Beatriz Gutierrez Tovar is watching, Nadia Herrera, um, Isabel Mayer, Parker Hamilton is watching you. Great. You made history as the first Asian American appointed uh, assistant uh, administrative officer. How do you feel about it as an immigrant being appointed um, to that position? Um, I actually, well, there is another immigrant who has been an mm -hmm. immigrant woman. Um, I have to point out that you should be so proud that Montgomery County right now, all four of the assistant chief administrative officers happen to be women. Um, so that's a uh, history making record. Um, even Just the first in that, but not in the selection for um, county council at large candidates. That Mr. Leggett uh, endorsed four men. Oh, Mr. Leggett's endorsement, that's Mr. Leggett's decision. I'm talking about the political appointees. Election is a very different game. And I know Mr. Leggett has a very strong track record of advancing diversity, and it's reflected in the workforce and in the political appointments that he has made. 
Um, as a woman and immigrant and Asian, I'm very proud that um, I have this opportunity to make contributions. Um, I, you know, and you, you ask me how it feels. I am enormously proud that I am given such trust and opportunity to make a difference at this level. Because to me, a strong economy is the foundation of a strong community. Um, we value diversity, but people like us did not come for diversity. We came for opportunities. We make up the diverse landscape of this community, right? So the, the foundation of strong uh, competitive um, economy and, ec and educational system is still the bedrock of a strong community, which is why my campaigns, uh, if you would call tagline or theme, is a stronger economy and a stronger community. You know, this is how we can work together to, to make everything work and, 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 uh, and bring communities together. You know? um, so yeah, I, I'm very proud and very honored, I would say, uh, to be the first, but I hope it won't be the last. Because but do you think you were selected because you're Asian or because your experience and knowledge and capability? I don't think being Asian was a factor, but I think mm -hmm. being Asian certainly was an asset because just, you know, uh, today's Montgomery County is roughly half non-white mm -hmm. and one third foreign born. And uh, the Asian population combined is almost as large as the Latino population. Um, I am uh, becoming an expert. I, I would say I am an expert on demographics in Montgomery County. Um, and uh, both communities, the Asians and Latinos, have a lot of similarities in why we came here um, and um, in what we want for our future and for our children and for our communities. You know? So I, even though I happen to be Asian, but I can speak to the immigrant experience uh, across the board with, uh, because I can feel I, I feel connection with a lot of other... Uh, I mean, I know you're Asian, yeah. and I love that you're Asian, but I feel when I talk to you mm -hmm. that you're Latino like me. <laughs> <laughs> I, even, I have to say, my, my Latino friends call me Lily, uh, which so is the way my, mo my mother would call me, <laughs> not Lily, you know, which is the English way of pronouncing it. <laughs> Santiago. Yes, yeah. In 2010, the census, you made an effort to include, to reach out uh, immigrants. And now this thing about the, this is really the first time that the Census Bureau is planning to ask respondents if they are U.S. citizens. Mm -hmm. What do you think about it? That You're talking about census 2020, census 2020 right, but yes. In, yeah. in 2010, you made an effort to yeah. outreach immigrants. And right, now, because I was a community liaison at the time, mm -hmm. working in the Office of Community Partnerships. And, and we, uh, several of us community liaisons, made a concerted effort along with our director, Bruce Adams, and the county executive to make sure that we had the best account. And Montgomery County actually, I would probably say, beat out Fairfax County <laughs> in uh, the percentage of participation. We had the highest participation rate among the capital region jurisdictions because we made a point of having multilingual push uh, for all the major spoken languages in Montgomery County because no matter who you are, where you are, if you live in Montgomery County, you should be counted uh, because everybody matters. And also that's how we get more federal dollars to provide services to our community. Um, so to answer your question, I feel strongly in the principle of everybody being counted, whatever it takes, uh, we should not have any mechanisms that deter people from participating. And I support the county council's policy, which is we don't need to ask people whether they're citizens or not. Exactly. As long as they're resident here, mm -hmm. we should count them and make it easier for them to participate. Yeah. And they pay yeah. taxes, exactly. like everyone else. Ac absolutely. Mm -hmm. Santiago. Yeah. And also uh, language access. Yeah. Uh, I, I was reading that you revamped the policies mm -hmm. uh, in language access for people with limited mm -hmm. English. That's right. Are you I'm deeply to? passionate about that. I told you how I learned English. Yes. I thought my English was great before I came here, but it wasn't. <laughs> I quickly That's realized. That's a surprise I, we all have, right? I quickly realized I couldn't understand anything they were saying on TV. I was <laughs> awkward when I had to laugh along other people when they were telling jokes. Mm -hmm. I was like, what is that? Um, so I'm very sympathetic to people who are still learning or people who sometimes are too old when they come here to start a new language all along, right? But they still um, should be treated with dignity they still should understand the basics of you know what it takes to function um, as adults um, so I did an all-out push uh, when I started as language access coordinator to totally revamp Montgomery County's way of delivering language access uh, uh, ser delivering services um, um, and uh, I also pushed for 
um, Montgomery County departments to have a written plan in place and then renegotiate the contract and conduct a lot of uh, in-service trainings for frontline employees. And on top of that, uh, we also produced a video in many different languages and the county executive also signed the executive order for the first time to make sure that the executive power is behind that uh, to, uh, I to really, ensure I access really, really, to really loved when you were the coordinator of the language I also program. miss those days. And uh, <laughs> I really love the, the yeah. person who continued doing that. Yes, Diane Wu is Diane also Wu doing is a great job. Uh, yes, incredible. we are both very passionate about that. And I guess the, yeah. the intention of, mm -hmm. of that, that, you know, uh, position mm -hmm. or it was excellent for Montgomery yes. County yes but not all departments follow the rules right so it's one thing to have the expectations and uh, and uh, and the policies that's another to execute and a follow-up and a measure right uh, we have all the tools you know we have uh, all the contractors to provide and all that some do a better job than others mm -hmm. from person to person the county uh, uh, government service providers not are all culturally equally culturally competent. Mm -hmm. You have to have constant training and awareness and measurement. Um, I think overall Montgomery County is exemplary compared to the capital region jurisdictions and compared to the state of Maryland yeah. um, in our push. Mm -hmm. But as the community changes so fast and so in such a profound way, it is hard for a local government to quickly pivot mm -hmm. and uh, keep up. You know, there are so many different complex needs and a cultural competency is one of them. And on that note, I really applaud the county executive and the county council for their leadership in um, in outsourcing certain, I wouldn't say out, in funding, maybe not outsourcing is not the right word, but in funding nonprofits who speak the languages of the people yes. to provide services as direct service providers, because that's a, a stroke of genius, because yeah. government costs more to deliver same services. And also, we don't always have the level of cultural competency that community-based organizations do, which is why it's great strategy to fund uh, in-language service providers, whether they're Latino, Asian, or African. Or I worked for, yeah. I think, 11, 12 years at the Recreation Department, mm -hmm. and the, the cultural competency was zero. And the refusal of doing LEP mm -hmm. or understanding mm -hmm the clients and the community was zero. Mm -hmm. So it is interesting, you know, from one side you were amazing, mm -hmm. Diane is amazing and the county executive and the council, but on the other hand, there's so much work that needs to be done, yeah, specific absolutely. on the language problem yeah. and the... It persists, and, yeah. Yes. Because we new people to keep coming and it takes time for them to get acclimated. Because overall, you know, all things considered, um, a community that draws a large number of immigrants is a fortunate community because we bring so much more, you know, to, to that. For those community. who don't know yeah. about the state um, delegate's office, what what does a state delegate that do? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, so I'm running for state delegate in District 15, which is right here. It includes Potomac, North Potomac, uh, parts of Rockview, Gaithersburg, um, and Germantown, and Clarksburg. Um, and Western Montgomery County, including Poolsville. Um, a state delegate's job essentially is to represent your district. And by the by the way, Montgomery County has total eight uh, state districts um, to to represent your district in Annapolis to legislate on behalf of your community and your county. Um, and the, one of the top priorities of the state legislator is to fight for fundings for transportation, for education, for anything that matters to our community. Um, so whether it's school construction, uh, whether it's hospitals, you know, transport, mass transit, and all of these things matter a lot to the immigrant communities because we came here for better education, right? Education is the important ticket to American dream. And uh, you know, I would say transit access is one of the most important social justice issues because if you have to take three buses to to work or to to see a doctor that holds you back from doing other things and contributing to society so these things are among the top priorities and of course you are part of the legislative body so you want to make sure all the laws and policies are conducive to growing a strong uh, community and economy yeah. I was reading your profile your bio and you are a fan of building public and private partnerships yes. through biohealth 
when you co-founded that company. Also, when you work at the Department of Economic Development. You have really done your homework. You have a job. And now in transportation. Yeah. What, what do you think about uh, public-private uh, um, agreement or partnership with Uber or Lyft? Because we think that they are more efficient than mm -hmm. the buses or uh, mm -hmm. others. I don't know. Do, do you think do you, do you think that could be a good idea? Or yes. Yes, work? I was involved in establishing two public-private partnerships. Uh, they are also called the P3s. First of all, as a government, as a public servant, I think we need to have the humility to admit that government doesn't have all the solutions to problems. Uh, we need to bring in the, the public sector, private sector, academic and uh, nonprofit sectors to work together for the best solutions um, to serve the community. So in the case of economic development, um, oftentimes the businesses are directly affected. We, if we want to have, create more private sector jobs, um, then we need to welcome businesses' input, whether they are small or large, right? Um, because they are an important part of our community. So um, my role in uh, building BioHealth Innovation was really to uh, leverage Montgomery County's unrivaled research and the development assets in biomedical research like NIH, kind of, right? To really make sure that we build a system to um, facilitate the commercialization of biomedical research. So the research can actually be applied to the real world to help people to cure diseases, to save lives instead of research dying in the lab, right? Um, because we have so much research, it is really upon us as a local community to know how to connect research with entrepreneurship. And that was the purpose of the organization. And since the founding of the organization, I'm proud to say, uh, the organization has built a very good system to support many early stage biomedical uh, research companies so they can do great things uh, for the world and not just for Montgomery County while creating jobs and opportunities. And another uh, P3 that I was involved in was uh, reposition uh, economic development functions um, so that they can be, uh, the organization can be more nimble to go after opportunities. Uh, whether it's attracting Amazon or growing small businesses or nurturing entrepreneurship, because honestly, uh, wherever there is a large cohort of immigrants, there's a lot of entrepreneurship mm -hmm. activities. Because you know, sort of that's the definition of immigrants, right? When we're, mm -hmm. we're risk takers by definition, because that was how we came here to pursue opportunities. You know, um, so being immigrant friendly also means being small business friendly and entrepreneurship. Um, friendly um, because we need to have that kind of uh, American spirit, uh, immigrant spirit to, to build a stronger community. So I'm very proud of my role in, in making sure Montgomery County is competitive to continue to draw people to our community and, and the businesses. Where are the chances to. with um, Amazon? Amazon? Mm -hmm. I think we are well positioned. It's because mm -hmm. of our consistent um, investments in strong public education, it's because of our community values, it's because of our great uh, smart growth, transit-oriented development, uh, our community building, um, just everything we have uh, been taken for granted. It makes us uh, a very compelling community. Um, I think uh, Amazon uh, took a serious look at Montgomery County and we became the first uh, count first county being listed, only county listed among the top 20 mm. destinations. That yeah. really speaks to our leadership. To who we are. Yes, yeah. exactly. I think we have very good chance. How is your candidacy going? I think I'm going strong. Um, as you can see, I love Montgomery County. I can't stop talking about it. <laughs> um, um, you know, I can't stop talking about changing demographics and changing economy and how we should position ourselves. Um, everywhere I go, as long as I have a opportunity to meet people, people are gravitated toward our campaign's message. Um, they're excited. As I said, I'm drawing out a lot of new voters. Um, um, but it is a competitive race. So uh, I think uh, someone like me could be leading the way for many people like us who say, you know, one third of Montgomery County is immigrants. By gosh, it's time for us to also have a seat at the table. Exactly. to explain certain things, to connect the different voices, mm -hmm. in addition to being an experienced public servant and community leader and all that kind of, to, to know what it's like to speak English as a second language, mm -hmm. you know.
And you received some big endorsement, right? And you mentioned some of the... Yes, uh, I'm, I'm very, very fortunate. The county executive from the beginning strongly endorsed me and his endorsement video is on my website. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> of course, I promptly put, put, it up, put that up. Um, and I got the endorsement of Sierra Club, which is a nonpartisan um, independent um, organization and the Asian American Democratic Club. And, I wish you the best and more endorsements. Um, can you tell us the address of your website? Yes, it's simply my name, lilychi.com, and she is Q-I, <laughs> L-I-L-Y-Q-I.com. Thank you very much, thank Lily. You. I appreciate your company tonight, and thank you, Santiago, and we'll see uh, you again next week. Good night. Thank you. Good night.